Hello everybody, what's up? Welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to another episode of Pakistan to Germany. And in this episode, I am going to discuss everything in detail. What are the steps that you have to go through to get admission in Germany? And what are the steps after getting an admission in Germany? So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, just take a moment and subscribe it. Follow me on Instagram, the handle is over here. And if this video helps you in any way, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions and suggestions, comment box is always open for you. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So when you're planning to move to the Germany to study here, the first and foremost thing that you have to do is to shortlist the universities that you wanted to apply to. To do that, Germany has made it so much easier for you. All the universities are present in one website, almost all of them. I mean, there is always an exception. This is the website dad.de where you can find almost every university in Germany, what is the criteria of that university and what are the deadlines for that university. So all you have to do is just open this link that I'm going to give you down in the description box below to make your life easier. Open that link, there's the program that you wanted to apply to and that.d is going to give you the list of universities that are offering that course or any related course. You just have to scroll down and you know adjust filters accordingly what you wanted to apply to, where you wanted to apply to. Just keep checking the universities like open one university. Data.de is going to redirect you to the university's website where you can see the criteria, what are the requirements, what is the deadline to apply to that program and then you can simply just shortlist the universities in that way. So once you're done shortlisting the universities, now is the time to apply to those universities. And, and at this point, I'm hoping that you already have your documents with you. If you are still confused about what documents you're going to be needed, you can check my documents video where I have discussed in detail what documents you need to get admission in Germany and from where you have to get them attested and verified. So the link is in the description box and I'm going to insert it somewhere over here as well. Just do check that. Okay, so once you're done with shortlisting the universities, all you have to do is to go to the portal of UniAssist, add those universities and programs there and just start applying. Remember, you have to apply ASAP, like before the deadlines, a month or a month and a half before the deadlines because in that way you are going to get benefited, uh, you are going to get admission earlier, your admission letter earlier, your appointment earlier and ultimately your visa earlier. <laughs> I'm going to add the link of the Union Assist in the description box below. You have to create an account there. Then you have to add the universities and courses that you wanted to apply to. And Union Assist have the application fee. Like actually the universities have the application fee. So for first university you're applying through Union Assist, you have to pay 75 euros. And for the remaining universities, you have to apply 30 euros each. So let's say you're applying to four universities, then you have to give 75 for the first one and 30, 30 plus 30 for the remaining three universities. Union Assist basically evaluates your application that if you fit the certain criteria of the university that you are applying to or not. If you are fulfilling the criteria only then UniAssist is going to forward your application to the university and if you are not fulfilling the criteria your application will not be forwarded to the university and remember that you are not going to get back your fees so just please be mindful to apply to those universities only uh, whose criteria you are fulfilling. Once you're done applying to the universities, now what you have to do is to sit back and wait for the replies of the universities. And most probably you do get the replies after the deadline has been passed. Uh, then a week later, you start getting replies from different universities, like you're going to get your admission letters. So once you get the admission letter from your dream university, all you have to do is to get enrolled in that university. And to do that, you have to pay like the semester contribution fee of the university, which is somewhere between 150 euros to 350 euros. Uh, once you pay that fee, then you are a student in that university. And you can pay the fees of the universities through bank transfer, telegraphic transfer. So to do bank transfer, you have to do is to go to the bank. To go to your bank with the passport copy, admission letter and, and the enrollment request, you are going to get this letter from the university where your fees and the breakdown and the bank details are written. You have to take these documents to the bank with you and they are going to transfer the money for you, of course, from your account. So once you are done with the enrollment process, then you should start focusing on your blog account. Let's just talk about the appointments before that. When are you going to apply for the appointment in M2? 
Bessie. Well, it really depends. If you're a fast track, then you don't have to apply for the appointments anytime sooner. You just have to apply them right after you get your admission letter. And by fast track, I mean all those students who have the GPA higher than 3.7 in their last degree. Uh, if you're that lucky student, then congratulations, you're going to get privileged. And remember, when your parents used to say, to get good grades, it was not for nothing. It really pays you off in one way or other. <laughs> so yeah, so if you have a CGPA higher than 3.7 in your last degree, then you can apply for the appointments after getting the admission letter in your hands and you're going to get appointment very fast, like within a week for like, uh, after two to three days. That's what had happened in my case. And if you're a student below the CGPA of 3.7, then you have to then what you have to do is to apply for the appointments the minute appointment slot is open in embassy like the minute in fact the second because if you are not going to do it that second you're messed up i'm sorry <laughs> i mean by that time you're not going to have that mission in any university but still you have to apply for the appointments that time because after that you're not going to get an appointment anyways so now that you have your appointment in an embassy, you have to open the blog account in Germany. And you can do that by sitting at your home. All you have to do is just open any blog account of your choice, which is like Coracle, Vintiba, Expatrio. I went with Coracle. Uh, if you want, I can link it down below. All you have to do is to just select the package you wanted to take, fill the form. And if you have selected the package where you're going to get the insurances, the minute after you apply to, you're going to get the email where you are going to get your insurance, health insurance certificate and travel insurance certificate uh, all of the details of the blog account in your email uh, so once you get the appointment in embassy then you can transfer the money to the blog account which is 11,208 euros and you're going to get a confirmation from your respective blog account company that you have transferred the money and they have received it and then you're going to show it to the embassy to process your visa and then you are going to give your visa interview which is like another whole story and which is like a list of documents like a list of documents so i am going to discuss the visa documents in detail in the next video uh, because these are like the list of documents and you have to be very much mindful of them while preparing them and you have to like uh, keep in mind the sequence of the documents while preparing your visa file and all that so yeah so that's pretty much about today's video hopefully you have got answered to most of your questions and if not you can put your questions below in the comment box that's it for today's video. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned and I have this.